We are going to start this video with an absolute crash course in Minnesota Vikings defense. And then after we do that, I'm going to tell you the one area the Detroit Lions can absolutely attack this defense and the one place that we, I think, can have absolute victory over them. So it seems so weird to be saying that we're here and I believe it's week 16. I know. I know it's game 15, but it's week 16 and we're sitting here and it's the first time we are playing the Minnesota Vikings and we get them two out of the next three, which many of us know, but the Minnesota Vikings play a form of defense under Brian Flores as the defensive architect on this thing. That is absolutely remarkable. This is not a defense that is just loaded with talent. It's not, but it is a defense that that plays scheme in such a weird way. And to prove that, I want you to see this graph. So what you see on this graph is rates of blitz and drop eight on defense through week 14, okay? And then blitz rate. So you have what percentage you blitz down here on the bottom, what percentage you drop eight back in coverage on the top. So in other words, a blitz is that you're bringing someone that's not one of the four down linemen. Dropping eight means exactly what it sounds like. You rush three and eight players stay back to defend a pass. This is where every NFL team is. We're going to talk about the Lions in a second. But this is where every, every, every team is. Here's the Vikings. I have never seen a chart like this. Um, usually they do this if there's one player dominating and he's sitting somewhere in here or something like that. What that shows is that 46% of the time they are blitzing. They are almost blitzing half the time. The closest teams to them are the Bucks and the Giants. Everybody else is under 35%. Isn't that crazy? That is absolutely crazy. Over on this side, what you can see is that they drop eight back in coverage about 22% of the time or 23% of the time. What that means is that about 70% of the time, Almost 70% of the time, they are playing a unique defense, all right? They are either blitzing or they are dropping eight back, and those aren't just normal things. The next highest person are the Saints, and even they're an outlier, all right, because they like to play, they drop back in coverage more. Now, you look at the Detroit Lions. They don't blitz that much. By the way, this has gone up after last week. Um, and they almost never drop eight in coverage, which I found to be very interesting. So knowing this, what does that mean for us? Like, what does that mean for the Lions and how do we attack the Blitz? Well, first, let's look at what the Blitz and how we play against the Blitz, okay? So last week, we kind of, this is a good one from Pride of Detroit. The offensive line got a taste of what it's like to face off against a heavy blitzing team. All right, you can see the Broncos right here. They're at about 30%. They're a top 10 team in the NFL in blitzing. Only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams do it more than them. So on the 18 pressures, um, they got 18 pressures and two sacks on the day. But Jared Goff win blitz, this is important, was 14 of 21, all right, 66 Point six, repeating, of course. Sorry, any of you Leroy Jenkins fans out there will know what I'm talking about. For 178 yards and not one, two, three, but four tutties, four touchdowns. So he was able to show that he can think quick in the pocket. So naturally, would my one thing be Jared Goff needs to be quick with the ball? No. No. Believe it or not, it's not, even though that's a big thing. My number one advantage that we can take of them is feed Jameer Gibbs the ball, all right? And it could be Gibbs, it could be Laporta, it could be a lot of these different things, but feed Jameer Gibbs the ball. When you have a heavy blitzing um, team, if you have a running back or a tight end, so Gibbs Laporta, it's rookie season, baby, all right? you throw to where the blitz is coming. This is football 101, all right? It doesn't always work, but you throw to where the foot, or where the blitz is coming. And I think when you look at Gibbs, you have to realize like he is our best player out of the backfield at doing that. He's been targeted a team third highest 60 times so far this year with 47 of those going for completions, which is a very high completion percentage, as it should be. 
His overall effectiveness of it's okay, right? 6.3 yards. He's got a touchdown. Um, he hasn't been going crazy in that. But when you add a blitz and you have a player like him who can get the ball and then have open space because there's less players behind the blitz, right? I mean, that's simple math. The more people you rush, the less people you have on the back end to protect. So getting the ball to guys who have speed and space. All right, I think the blitz works really, really well. I know this is going to sound counterintuitive against mobile quarterbacks. Think about how well the blitz worked last week against Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's biggest thing is he is the king of improvisation. Like that's what his career has honestly been based off. That's what his archetype is in Madden. It has been forever. I remember creating quarterbacks and be like, who do you want to be? Oh, an improv improvisational like Russell Wilson, whatever. Right. I, I got off on a rabbit trail there. But so how you beat him is you blitz, 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 make him make really quick decisions. That is not how you beat a guy like Goff. I know what the argument could be to that. But with Goff, he has the ability to make quick decisions. He doesn't have the ability to run away. So you can just run linemen who are just as fast as him, right? So if they're going to go blitz heavy on us, great. If they're going to go drop coverage, run the ball down their throat. Like this is an offense that is multiple, that is designed for things like this and the key to it when you have a high blitzing team is there just needs to be an outlet who's the outlet and will the guys recognize it Amon Ross St. Brown is going to get open if he has one-on-one -on -one coverage if they are blitzing a safety and there's not another safety over the top Jamison Williams has the ability to get or beat someone over the top because we have a good offensive line to pick it up this can get ugly if you get down the wrong uh, path but it also can go really, really well. It can go really, really well. I will add on the other side of the ball, let's talk about that for a second. The best thing that we can do is stop the run. Make them one-dimensional with just Nick Mullins passing the ball. That's it. And I wouldn't back off blitzing just yet, even though it's kind of counterintuitive, but I would make Mullins prove that he can make very, very quick decisions. Tyson Chandler, Ty Chandler, um, is, he played really well last week against the, uh, the Bengals. I think he got like 130 yards on 20 some carries. He averaged over five and a half yards a carry. Like it was really good. And it made you wonder like, why, where's this guy been all year? Well, remember the, the Bengals were awful against the run and, and they were awful at stopping the run all year. I think they're like the 30th ranked team in run stopping and, um, DJ Reader got injured in like the f early first quarter of that game, who is by far their best run stopper at defensive tackle, best probably run stopper on that team. I think like two of the last three years, he's led all defensive linemen and tackles. Like he's unbelievable when it comes to that. So um, don't back off blitzing, stop the run, and then just know they're probably going to blitz a lot. And when they don't, that's fine. You can still get it to your players in space. It's not a problem. Make them tackle. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next one. Go Lions.